Hey guys, this is going to be a review on the Canon R50. This is supposed to be a beginner mirrorless camera, so you can have all your interchangeable lenses. And this uses the Canon RF mount. So I first bought this camera with the 18 to 45 kit lens, but what I did was I sold that 18 to 45 lens and I purchased this lens, which is the 18 to 150. Now this 18 to 150 is pretty much a straight upgrade from that 18 to 45 kit lens. Um, it's more versatile, it has more zoom, and it has better image quality as well. But of course with this longer uh, lens does mean that it is heavier and a little bit bigger. Storage will be not as compact, but again for what this lens provides, I think that's a worthy trade-off. So the reason I went with this 18 to 150 instead of the two lens kit was because I kind of just wanted to buy one lens and have that sit on here without having to switch out for the 18 to 45. And then if I wanted to get like a longer zoom shot, then switch to the 55 to 210, I believe. So yeah, I kind of just went with this lens a kind of do-it-all lens and it's been working really well for me even for those further away shots. I will say though this lens is I think Canon's most expensive RFS lens. Um, this thing the MSRP is like $500 which is almost as much as the Canon R50 body itself so it's not a uh, cheap lens that's for sure. Now this lens hood you see on here, the JJC LH60F, this is a cheap lens hood that I purchased from Amazon and it's been working really well. Uh, blocks uh, any kind of additional flaring in the picture. So I think having this is a great addition and it's pretty cheap so you don't have to get the official uh, Canon lens hood. So generally what people are saying about the Canon R50 is this is supposed to be like your first real camera for people who want to move on something better from their smartphones which is kind of the case for me um, this is my first uh, mirrorless camera and i wanted something small and light something easy to use and something easy for me to learn and grow on and i think this definitely does the trick it's a very small and lightweight body um, it's a lot smaller in person than I was expecting, uh, but that smaller body obviously has its pros and cons, um, especially with the uh, grip, but I'll get into that later when I talk about the cons. This camera has a plastic body, and then it has like a rubber coating. So basically this whole front part is like a rubber coating, and that helps with the grip when you're holding on to the camera. Now, even though it is a plastic body, it still feels pretty solid. Um, there's no creaking or anything like that, no flex. It's very solid. And because of its plastic body um, and it's lightweight, it makes it really great for traveling. I just have this thing hanging around on my neck and I haven't had any kind of a problem with that. It's not that heavy, so it's uh, perfect for that. It also has an inbuilt flash, which you have to manually raise, but there it is. Here's the buttons. A very simple and basic kind of button layout. To turn it on, you just flick the switch on. And there we go. I'll switch this over to auto. So this camera is very simple to use. Um, I think its ease of use makes this ideal for uh, beginners or even just people who just want to bring something around and quickly take uh, pictures. They can pretty much use the touch screen to adjust most things like your autofocus, um, even your selecting your different shooting modes. The Canon interface is also very simple. You can kind of just set all your settings here. It's very very intuitive and such an easy to use UI. And of course everything can be adjusted using the touch screen. Yeah, this Canon interface though is very simple and straightforward, which I like. There's just some shots I took earlier this morning. Just a great, great camera.
Now, of course, we buy these cameras because we want a step up in quality, right? And this camera is definitely a huge jump in video and picture quality compared to a smartphone. Um, especially for someone like me who has been recording and shooting all my photos with my smartphone my entire life. Having a dedicated camera is a huge improvement compared to what I've been using. There's also a lot of point and shoot options here for uh, if you're just getting started into taking pictures. Um, this is obviously the auto mode and this creative assist is kind of like the general um, auto setting where you just point and shoot and they also have a bunch of different like presets and um, like filters you can apply like that I personally don't use any of these though I prefer to just shoot a normal picture and then edit that picture later on in post like in um, you know Photoshop or whatever but they also have different things like advanced AI and this is kind of like an HDR mode um, it takes like three different images and then merges it all into one and then you kind of have like a HDR picture. So this is useful for when you're in next to a window or you're taking a shot where there's a big difference in lighting. Kind of like how right there there's sunlight directly shining on that wall. Um, things like this, this HDR mode will be really, really helpful for that. And of course we do get this kind of flippy screen which will be really helpful for people who do uh, vlogging and stuff like that. Another reason I bought this camera though was for its video capability. Now I usually shoot in manual mode for my pictures and then movie mode for um, taking videos and stuff. And this thing can take 4K 30fps videos. That's the highest it will shoot. And you can also shoot in slow motion, but that's only 1080p at 120 fps so i wish it was a uh, 4k 120 but that's only for their high-end cameras like the canon r5 now the autofocus is excellent on this thing it tracks animals and people really really well it tracks it instantly and it stays locked on so that's really nice um, another thing that's really great is that the canon app makes it very easy to transfer photos to my phone and um, especially when I don't have my computer around. And you can basically transfer pictures and videos anywhere on the go, like when you're outside or even in a car, since the camera connects to your smartphone using Bluetooth. So that's a really nice touch. Okay, so I pretty much went over all of the good things about this camera, but now I need to talk about the cons. First of all, um, the battery life is kind of bad. Uh, it uses an LPE 17 battery. You can purchase spares from pretty much anywhere. I got it from Best Buy, but um, the camera doesn't last that long. When I do hybrid shooting, so photos and videos, usually about two to three hours later, then the battery will be pretty low. So you definitely need to pick up a spare battery or maybe even multiple spare batteries if you're going to be shooting the entire day. You want to have those batteries to uh, swap out whenever you get uh, pretty low. So whenever I'm done shooting or recording videos, I just plop this battery out. And that one will be charging and then put this new one in and then I'm ready to go. So it basically, it's a cycle and I'll always have a nice battery in there. So this is what I wanted to talk about earlier when I mentioned uh, the small body, but another downside is the comfort. Because the body is so small, holding it is kind of weird. Um, like my fingernails at first were kind of digging into this uh, rubber grip here. So to avoid that, I kind of point my fingers down like that. But also, I think my biggest problem with the comfort is that whenever I'm holding the camera like this, 
I'm pressing so many different buttons by accident. Uh, when I'm holding this camera, I will accidentally switch over to like a burst shooting mode or something, or I start clicking all these buttons and it's changing my uh, menu around. So that's happened to me quite a number of times already. So having that smaller body is of course great for travel and stuff, but for comfort, it's kind of bad for that. Uh, so that's definitely a con. Now, even though the autofocus is great for, you know, animals and people, I found that the autofocus can also sometimes be kind of annoying, um, especially for someone like me who usually records uh, like products. Sometimes the autofocus will just don't know what to focus on and it starts focusing on some weird things. Like on that G-Shock video I just put out, I was trying to focus on uh, like my watch right here, but the camera kept focusing on the box. So that's why I had to move the box out. Even when I was manually tapping the camera to focus on the watch, it kept going up there. So that's why later I just pushed those items out of the background. Another downside with the R50 is the lens options. Specifically, I'm talking about the first party lens options from Canon and things designed for the RFS mount. Now the RFS camera lenses are made for uh, crop sensor bodies, they're APS-C such as this one. Um, and I think there's only three lenses in Canon's RFS lineup. So it's not that much. Um, though you can use any kind of regular full frame RF lens on this small uh, frame. Another problem I have is overheating. Because I shoot in 4K 30, uh, this thing kind of overheats after about 30 minutes of straight recording. Now it does show a heat indicator on the screen, which lets you know when it gets too hot. When you record in short bursts, I find that it doesn't overheat though. Um, I brought this to an aquarium where I took a bunch of short videos over the span of like two to three hours and there was no overheating problems. Another con is on the budget bodies like this one, there's no weather sealing. So it's not dust and water resistant. So you just got to be a little bit mindful and a bit more careful when and where you're going to take photos and videos. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Canon R50 as a first camera. Um, this is a great first camera and the image quality is really, really good. I think it's a huge step up from like a smartphone and it's very easy to learn and grow on. Because this was released in 2023, it has a lot of Canon's modern features that are taken from their higher end cameras, uh, such as their autofocus system. So yeah, that's it for this review on the Canon R50. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.